Hello everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Elisa and I'll be your host for today. I'm a designer on Adobe Fresco and I'm here with Anthony Jones. Hello and everybody. AKA Robot Pencil on Instagram. Yes. Um, I'll introduce Anthony in a second, but today I just wanna go over some housekeeping first. And hey everyone in the chat, welcome. Michelle, Mamadou, Jimmy, it's good to see all of you. So. Uh, today we have a few things going on. Let's take a look at the schedule. We'll be live again tomorrow as well. We're doing character design today. This morning we had the daily creative challenge, which we'll look at in a little bit. Uh, during the stream, we'll take a look at what you guys have created for today. We have the XD daily creative challenge as well. There's an XD stream after this one and there's a lot going on, so stay tuned. And in about 30 minutes, we'll have a chat and win. So everyone should get in the chat, let us know where you're from, say hi, and then you'll have a chance to win 100 three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Woo! So let us know where you're from and what you're interested in seeing today. And um. here we're with Anthony. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of your work. So yeah, sure. I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, great. So, uh, my name is Anthony Jones. Um, I am the creator and owner of Robot Pencil, which is pretty much just my alias. And uh, I've been working for the film and game industry since 2007. Um, I've worked for companies like Blizzard, um, uh, Riot Games, uh, what else? Sony Santa Monica, and many more. And I've done mostly character designs and concepts. And as you can see, I like to draw like lots of robots and monsters. Uh, I, in fact, I actually worked on Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, I worked on one of the creature designs in one of the shorts. And I'm not gonna tell you which one because it's kind of a spoiler. But if you watched all of them, you probably know which one it might be from looking at my artwork. You might get a clue. Um, <clears throat> and I've also been teaching uh, online for nearly like maybe seven or eight years now. And so that's what I do now. I, I pretty much do freelance and I teach online. And I'm gonna probably be teaching today, so. Yeah. yeah. What do you think we're gonna look at today? So uh, today I'm gonna do some character designs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be probably doing a couple. And I'm gonna be using Photoshop. Photoshop is probably uh, by far my favorite tool. I've been using it since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually become really, really proficient with this. And it's important that I kind of start with that because uh, what you'll probably see in the next five to 10 minutes is a pretty like rendered image, mm -hmm. um, just using like a simple round brush. And it's important that people know this because when I'm painting, it, it kind of looks like magic. Mm -hmm. But I'll explain as I'm painting it, it's not magic. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of practice. Yeah. And, and when you start to paint with like Photoshop and learn like all the hotkeys like I do, um, it, it becomes just like second nature. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's your <clears throat> setup you got going on here? Okay, so I got, this is my laptop and this is actually my main work station. Mm -hmm. This is like, I do all my work on this. Mm -hmm. I don't have like a super computer at home waiting for me. Uh, I do mostly concept art, so I paint everything. So I'll, all I need is this and uh, a keyboard, uh, I, basically. Yeah, right? a keyboard and a Wacom tablet. So I'm using the just like a simple, small Wacom tablet. And this is not just my uh, to-go setup. This is my setup. Yeah. Like when I'm at home, I have this, this, and then I have like a bigger monitor. Mm -hmm. Something I think I actually have that same monitor we're looking at okay. to see ourselves. Like nice I rounded. Yeah, it's just like screen. a curved 30-inch mm -hmm. monitor, and that's it. I don't really do. I don't need much. I just need uh, a pretty effective tool and time. Okay. That's essentially all I need. And you've mastered the whole like drawing hockey, here, yeah. looking here, hockey thing, right? Yeah, in fact, um, uh, today I'm gonna probably talk more about like just kind of the philosophy of what it is to be a good uh, concept artist, you know what I mean? Uh, and then tomorrow, because I'm gonna be streaming tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk about practicality of like how to become better at this uh, job. So if you guys are interested in knowing more of like the kind of like next steps on how to really do this, uh, I'm gonna talk about that more in length uh, the following day and kind of make that my main focus. So there's like, it's not the same topic both days, but today I just kind of want to like talk about like, you know, how to become 
uh, a good concept artist and just like the mentality of it all. You know what I mean? Yeah, that and, sounds perfect. And we have a we have everybody's chat. I can see. Yeah. Let, let us know what you want to see, guys, what you want to hear, some questions you have for Anthony. Some people are shocked at your small Wacom tablet there. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that'd be great if you can actually, if you see any kind of question. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out here. Okay. And you, I'll relay those questions to you. In fact, to make it even easier for her, if you just type in question and then like colon and then your question so she can spot so it. So I can make sure that we get all your questions here, guys. Yeah, that'd be great. We got people from India, from Italy. Oh, awesome. All wow, over great. the place. <clears throat> that's that's really fantastic. Um, I really like this idea that a lot of people from all around the world are able to kind of see me work. Uh, because, you know, I teach online and the majority of my students are like from over, like overseas. Mm -hmm. Like like 85% of them are like from some different country. Like I have a class right now and I have students that are li literally up to like 3 in the morning. Taking your class taking in the middle class. of the night. Yeah. And you are all uh, in the classroom online yes. together? Yes. Okay. And That's it's, so cool. It's very inspiring, right? Yeah. Because You can have access from anywhere. <laughs> yeah, these people really want to learn, you know? And Istanbul, New Zealand. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> and so I'm really excited whenever that happens. Because like, uh, what I want to do as an educator is obviously educate people and help people uh, wherever, whoever, it doesn't matter, you know? Yeah, Venezuela, UK. Oh, cool. Michelle says, wow, he's drawing so fast. It would take me hours to draw something <laughs> like that. He's done in less than a minute. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, I could see you're changing your brush, brush size quickly mm -hmm. and you're eye dropping and Constantly. that's how you're, yeah. you're switching colors, right? Oh, and trust then, me. Um, when we were setting up this live stream event and stuff and uh, I was being asked, like, you know, what I was going to talk about and how long it was going to be and I was like, uh, Two hours is a long time. It is a long time, like, yeah. I'll, I'll do a couple of drawings because uh, I can do a lot in a short amount of time. And in fact, I went to Japan and there was an event in Japan where you had to compete against other painters. You had 20 minutes to do like a painting based off of two random words. Whoa. Yeah, you can actually look it up online. It's pretty crazy. What is it called? Um, it's called Limits. Mm -hmm. um, if you type in limits.jp, um, you'll, you'll find it. And if you put, if you type in limits.jp robot pencil, like in Google, you can you, see you. you can probably find my competition. It's a long one. It's like an eight hour event, but you can just skip through all those and just look at mine. <laughs> we already got some questions. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, so yeah. Jack's asking, do you use your opacity or flow adjusted? Is it set to pressure sensitive? Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, so one of the things that I like to do whenever people ask questions that I feel, uh, if I give them a direct answer, uh, it's not enough, right? So I like to do the whole, you teach a person how to fish, you teach mm -hmm. them for a lifetime, mm -hmm. and then I give the person a fish. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'll okay. give you the answer after I give you kind of like the larger uh, principle. So the question was like, okay, am I using opacity, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So the reality is I'm using a brush that has, um, oh wait, let me use a different value, uh, the full range. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that this brush has that's special. In fact, if we look, if we go to the settings, it's just the standard round brush with some pen pressure on the size jitter, or I'm sorry, the minimum diameter. So that means the lighter I push, the, the smaller, smaller starts, be, okay. and then the harder I push, the larger it's gonna be. And I do the same thing with opacity and flow. Um, but this is not enough, right? Because if I just show you this, right, it's, and this is the me giving you the fish, mm -hmm. it doesn't then all of a sudden mean you're gonna go and be able to paint yeah. this, right? So, so the whole teaching you how to fish. So what I would suggest is, it doesn't really matter what brush you, you choose. You should just pick a brush that you feel the most comfortable with, like something that you think makes a lot of sense and you feel, um, it doesn't feel like you're fighting it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people, whenever they jump into digital medium, they're always fighting against the tool. And I say, just pick one that you don't feel that resistance. You're gonna always feel some resistance, but then just practice. Mm -hmm. Just paint with it all the time. And, and don't think of it as like, oh, digital versus traditional. Just think of it as a different tool. Uh, because if you think of it this way, you can make the same argument with like oil painting and watercolor. Yeah. Right? Like, just because you can oil paint really well, doesn't then mean you can go and do watercolors mm -hmm. the next day, right? But if you understand your fundamentals of value and lighting and perspective and all that great stuff that makes you a great designer, then you're, you're you know, you're not going to... Uh, take too long to really adjust. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, when I was first getting into digital, 
you know, I came from like drawing a lot. I think most of us do, right? Most people draw like with paper and pencil mm -hmm. or some sort of pen or whatever. And so when you draw, like you draw like this, right? Like you, you kind of like build your lines and form and you shouldn't paint like that mm -hmm. because if you paint like that, you build muddy colors. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. And if you, when you guys uh, have this fully recorded and online for people to watch, watch back to how I started this painting and you'll see that I'm not like, Doing building that. up because that's like drawing with a pencil. Mm, it's I'm different in, here in this tool, right? Absolutely. I'm in Photoshop, meaning that I have literally access to every color, mm -hmm. every value, every like degree of pressure sensitivity where a pencil doesn't have that uh, extreme range. In fact, the only thing that I can think that comes closest to the way that this feels is a ballpoint pen, right? Because a ballpoint pen does have that range. But the only difference is that the ballpoint pen can't be as big as the canvas, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So there's still some differences. And so the, the giving you a fish uh, strategy <laughs> is that you should uh, pick a brush that you feel most comfortable with and just just practice. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that challenge and that difficulty that you first feel in the very beginning is normal. Uh, don't be discouraged by this. This is just natural. Um, you wouldn't go to a gym and just... A, immediately lift hundreds of pounds. Uh, you wouldn't just go to a marathon and hope to finish it at a reasonable pace, you know? You have to train in all of these different regards, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's my answer. And then, like I said, the 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 fish, <laughs> right, in this example is just, it's, base, it's a basic round brush. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna use more texture brushes, mm -hmm. so be prepared for that. I'm gonna do more fancy stuff. Oh. Yeah. Right. I saw a question earlier about how you, where you get your inspiration from for okay, this, the content that you create. Uh-huh. <clears throat> oh, these are all great questions, man. And there's more, yeah. If, uh, <laughs> if you have more questions, I might have missed it, so go ahead and ask again if I didn't get to your question. Yeah, so inspiration, that's a great one. Um, the reason why I like when people ask about inspiration uh, is because I can, it gives me an opportunity to dispel a lot of like myths or like some sort of like perception of what inspiration means. And so whenever people think about inspiration, um, they think of it like in, in some sort of like element of fantasy, right? Or some sort of like mystical thing where it's like, okay, so, um, and this might not be true for the person who asked the question. They might have more, because all these people are artists, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. So they might have a little bit more um, mature understanding of creative skills. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't, uh, inspiration is just a, another tool, okay? And when you th when you think of inspiration as a tool, instead of like some sort of thing that you just have to have or something that like um, you look at and then you get inspired in a very specific way, uh, if you think of it as a tool, like, okay, I wanna draw robots. Mm -hmm. So to be able to draw robots and be like inspired, I would have to then expose myself to nothing but robots, right? So what I would do is like when I was learning like drawing mechs, I was very bad at it, but I love robots. Like I like when I watch animes, when mm -hmm. I play video games, like robots, I almost, I'm always attracted to towards robots. Uh, there's a movie that came out a while ago called Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that movie was a good movie in terms of plot. I don't remember much story of, line <laughs> of what was important about the story, mm -hmm. but I love that movie. Uh, I remember loving it, like mm -hmm. every second of it. Uh, Transformers clearly is not full of really, you know, <laughs> you know, heart wrenching plot and, yes. and, and you know something it's that will visuals. make you cry. But I love those Transformers. I remember seeing the first time the I uh, forget the name of the the Transformer, but the one the helicopter on the military base and it's like and transform. I was uh -huh. like, dude, that's <laughs> so cool. And so I was like, okay, I need to learn how to draw robots so I can like design robots, hopefully in the future. Yeah. And so all I did was just look at a lot of robot designs, but that wasn't enough. Like, cause I started to realize that I needed to have some fundamental knowledge of mechanical parts. So then I started to look at, you know, machine parts and robotic that actually exist. You yeah, know, so not you just, have an understanding on how to actually draw absolutely. this and come up, come up with this, right? Yeah, like the anatomy, right? Yeah. Like the anatomy of mechanical engineering. And then Obviously, it looks much more realistic when you have a better understanding. Yeah, I always say that 
you're not going to be able to draw something if you don't know how something looks mm -hmm. or you don't have any basic understanding of how it works. It's going to be harder, right? Um, see, the human mind and eye has a really good intuition about when it sees something and knows what it is. It's like an instinct, right? But it doesn't, that same instinct does not translate to an ability to replicate it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to have that, you have to have a deeper understanding. And so for me, inspiration is that, right? Yeah. Like I just, whatever I want to be able to draw, I just acquire the skills and tools to do it and uh, rely on patience and uh, resilience. Because if you rely on like inspiration and motivation, those are really fickle. Mm -hmm. Like, because motivation is one of those things where it makes you feel good. Right, like, oh man, I, I want to do something like right now. Push you further, yeah, to get to where you want to be. Yeah, and so it doesn't happen every day, right? Mm -hmm. Some days you just you don't feel motivated. You're just like, meh, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just gonna be a part of a book club. Yeah, or... <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about my book club earlier. That's, that's actually a very and productive. I hope use I inspired your time. you. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a really productive use of your time because you're learning something. Yeah, um, but. But, you know, like some days you're just not doing or maybe like a good example is that like you don't want to read a page or chapter from mm -hmm. your book. But if you know you have a book club, then you're like, you have to be disciplined. Exactly. You just got to do it regardless of how you feel. And I think when people ask for like, oh, how do you uh, get motivated or inspired? I usually say um, you should you should try to be more uh, patient and resilient which requires discipline. And you, you know? also have like the end goal in mind, right? Absolutely. Yeah, like, I can demonstrate it in like a visual way. So again, my Photoshop skills, no interface, right? So And then I have another couple of questions for you after this one. One of them was, uh, there's one here, what is the most important auxiliary skill you have de developed to improve your work? Another one, mm -hmm. I just missed it. Uh, I'll, I'll see if All I right. can get that one back. Okay, cool. Um, I'll, I'll get to that one in just a second. So back to the motivation, inspiration. So a lot of times when people are motivated, they, there's like a, a huge flame and like you go to an event, like you, we were at Lightbox, that's mm -hmm. incredibly inspiring and motivating. Any event where you're surrounded by other like-minded people it will always be that way. I was, uh, I was at Adobe Max this uh, last year and that was super cool, man. I saw a lot of cool stuff. So, you know, you leave that type of event with like the fire burning, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh. But then the next day or the next week, it's a little bit less. And then mm -hmm. the next, until eventually it, there's nothing there. And so what I usually recommend people to try to think about is, well, you know, okay, you're gonna have that day where the fire is burning hot, right? But what's your baseline? Like, what does the fire look like every day after and before? And I always encourage people to have this kind of mentality. So whenever they're, you know, trying to learn anything, like you guys want to draw more robots or be inspired by a specific artist or style, then you need it every day for a series of months or years, just be looking and consuming that content. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be in, ingrained into your subconscious. And so you're not going to be um, reliant on like these external factors of like, I always have to have something around me to be able to even create. It's just now in you. Yes. Because as you guys can see, I just made this robot almost would appear to be out of thin air. Uh, with no reference, I don't have anything around me. I'm just drawing this in a matter of minutes. But that's not an accident. I've been designing robots for years. Yep. This is... You're looking at it all the time. You're mm -hmm. maintaining that motivation by being surrounded by other people who are doing this stuff as well, yeah. right? Yeah, and I just draw when I don't want to draw. <laughs> you know? And that's a real important... Uh, distinction. So uh, the auxiliary skills thing, that's a, another great question. This and then is, we have another awesome. question about what your class is. I think some people okay, want to cool. find out more about that as well. Sure. So um, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, so the auxiliary skills, um, one of them is just like, you know, better posture and better um, uh, hand control. I think a lot of times uh, I run into people who uh, draw and they like have wrist pain, they have to like wear wrist guards, they have um, back and shoulder pain. Uh, right now, I, I, might gonna, I might have some back pain <laughs> at the <laughs> end of this. Yeah, but it's fine, this is like a temporary thing. But I don't sit, I actually stand. Uh, right? All the time when you're drawing? All the time, okay. yeah. 
Uh, not always. When I first started, I didn't, mm -hmm. and but I started having back pains, okay. right? Uh, and I used to have wrist pains too, uh, where I used to like have to like put my hand up for like five minutes and then put it down because my whole arm would just go numb. Oh yeah, wow. And um, I used to have finger pains, but then I got rid of all of that by just being more conscious of this. So this is a skill that's a little bit less about like being a good artist. This is a skill like maintaining your career long term. Unlike like professional athletes who get injured from like just wear and tear, we're not really doing anything that should warrant this. Um, and so having these types of pains are avoidable. And so first thing is like I mentioned, I have like the setup. So there's, there's a very specific reason why I don't use like the screen. Yeah, there was people, a question about that earlier. Yeah, people because, like, why don't you use the big yeah, yeah, because you lean in, right? And if you do that for years, because I've been doing this for like about 12 years now, so can you imagine just 12 mm -hmm. years? 12 of this, years of this every day. Yeah, I'm gonna, I would have been in here like this instead, <laughs> right? Um, but like, if you think about the setup, like, okay, I, I would be standing, I would be actually much taller than this too. Maybe I can raise this chair up. I'll do it later. Um, so I'll be, like, my arm would be at a right angle. Mm -hmm. Like, both my arms would be at a right angle. Like, right now they're not. That's what I'm saying, I could probably raise the chair. I'll do it all right, I'll do it later, it's okay. Um, and then I would have my monitor here, not down here. Cause I'm right now, I'm just doing this. It, otherwise you guys wouldn't be able to see me. I would have to mm -hmm. constantly like look over the but monitor. But like the right line yes, to your Yes, like eye. it'll be to my eye. So like I'm like literally just like a right angle, straight posture, looking straight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have any issues at all. Uh, when I first started doing the standing desk, um, I had a lot of pain in my feet. Uh, and there was some pain in my back at first, but it goes away after like two weeks, definitely after a month. And now I just don't even notice it. And so it's funny because I go to events where you stand up more than you normally would. And I don't feel any fatigue of any kind where all my friends are just like, oh man, I gotta sit down. Because they're not used to standing, not used all, to the standing all the time. Yeah. And I'm, I think it's the reverse. I think you should feel tired of standing so you should take a break versus tired of sitting and standing yeah, up and moving around. that's more healthy probably for your body. Yeah, like to remind yourself that you're a human being and you're alive is not where you should be. You should be <laughs> the other way where you're constantly reminded that you're alive and And then you, you take rest. a break. Yeah, and so uh, I think that's a really good skill that's like outside of just drawing. Uh, anything else is um, you should just constantly experience real life. Um, like go travel, meet new people, like. I've been talking to you about book clubs. Mm -hmm. So maybe one day I'm designing a character and, like, oh, you know, it's, we want this character is kind of relatable. You know, it's like a person that does something that's pretty interesting. Like, oh, you know, maybe a book club. Mm -hmm. And they read nothing but nonfiction books. And this person's like driven by this. I can like just imagine a character design based off of that and just run with it. Just that information. Just that information. And that has nothing to do with drawing, right? It's just it's, conversation. Yeah, that's because you've kind of gone out of doing this all the time and you're yes. putting yourself in the outside world so you can get that other way of, I don't know, making something and ins getting inspired, right? Yeah, just just making sure that every piece of information that I acquire, like I was just talking to our tech guy and he was talking about him and his brother playing video games and how um, he's just like hitting the sticks. I thought that was a really fascinating term for like, you know, the joysticks of a controller. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that could be cool. Like, even if it has nothing to do with video games, what if it's like a, a, a pilot of a mech? Yeah. And they're like, all right, we gotta hit the sticks, boys. <laughs> and then like, that could be cool. Yeah, it's easy. And, and it's like a, it's like a, one of those like relatable moments yeah. that you would see in a film or a video game or a TV show that's like, it, it, it seems very personal. Like, oh yeah, that seems like they brothers would say something like that to each other. Because they did, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, there was an old school movie by Spielberg. I think it was Spielberg, maybe not. It was uh, called Portugeist. And it was where like the house was alive and they built it on like an Indian burial ground. Um, and in the movie, there's a moment where, um, because the movie's premise is that the house is possessed, that the TV would keep turning off. And at first you think, oh, it's like the house. Yeah. But in reality, it was like the neighbor, like they had like the same remote. remote. Control. Uh. So, and then they had like this war between each other where they're turning each other's TVs <laughs> off. Yeah, and then you're laughing that's because funny. that's a very endearing moment. Yeah. And it was in the film and you put stuff like that in a movie or a TV show, not because it's just funny, but it makes people actually relate immediately to these people. Like, oh, I can see that. Yeah. Like there's like a act, like neighbors like actually have this kind of rivalry. 
and it's like narratively it makes sense because it's like this kind of hilarious thing of like it's a it's like a it's like kind of like a side like oh it's not really the house it's just mm -hmm. neighbors mm -hmm. like bickering with one another and so like uh that kind of stuff is very charming and if you could put that in your design in any way shape or form that helps makes it more rich yeah so we have our chat and win in three minutes so three minutes you okay, all got to cool. get in the chat and then you can have a chance at winning a hundred free stickers which is so cool um i saw a question earlier asking about who who do you think is killing it in the in the concept art oh there's too uh, many game right now <laughs> there's too many <laughs> there's a lot of great artists uh from all around the world um, in fact, one of the things that I always uh, talk to people about, uh, because people always talk about like competition, right? There's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so they, they are always worried like, oh man, what do I do with all this competition? Um, like, how do I compete? And the reality is that there's plenty of room because just as many people that are, you know, are awesome concept artists, there's a lot of studios that are just starting out, you know, and having access to great tools that need great artists. And so for me, uh, like it's a real answer. Like I, there's too many mm -hmm. that I think are really doing a great job. I can't name one and think that that's yeah. the truth. There's too many. Um, there's a website called ArtStation. We were just talking about this before. If you guys go visit ArtStation, just the homepage, you'll see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you go to my ArtStation, which is just at Roba Pencil, uh, you can see um, artwork that I've liked okay. and it's over a thousand. Wow. So it's not like, oh yeah, let me just name this one person. No, there's literally thousands of people that I'm just like, this is crazy amount of skill. And a lot of it is like, like people that are not from the States too. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people like in here that are not from, from Italy, from yeah. Venezuela. They're just, they're, they're passionate and they want to get in there. You know, they're, um, it's, it's something that's like an escape for some of these people too. I know like I have some students from Serbia and a lot of them, you know, really want to find a way to better their lives and also do something creative. And when you come from a nation that doesn't necessarily support this kind of um, field of career, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not going to get a lot of, you know, I don't know, just support. So it's nice to have people online you know, to look at and be inspired by. And yeah, there's too many. I can't I can't think of any one person that's just killing it. Yeah. All of them are. <laughs> <laughs> so we got 50 seconds until we pick a winner. Everyone get in the chat. Gustavo from Brazil. Okay. Viola. I could talk shortly about uh, my class. You yeah, said 50 yeah. seconds. Oh, there's 30, I can see the countdown, nice. I'll try to make it sweet and short. So I, teach, I just teach online. You can visit my website, robotpencil.net, to find out more. Um, but it's relatively like a one-on-one -on -one type of thing, but there's other people there. But I, uh, I don't have a curriculum. Uh, I focus on individual skills, and I give everybody individual homework to make sure that they... Oh, so it's very one-on-one uh, -on -one based, dedicated to kind yes. of each student's individual Absolutely. needs. And I'll, I'll elaborate later, um, but essentially that's it. But you can go get more information on my website. Yeah, robot pencil. All right, we got four, three, two, one. Everyone, get in the chat. Stickers, 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 and we'll be right back to announce our winner shortly. <laughs> hey, everyone. We're picking a winner for the stickers. Hey, Angela, Jimmy, Leah, Callie. Stickers, stickers, stickers. Woo, woo. Oh, wow, there's oh, a lot of people. Oh, yeah, everyone's in the chat. Jordan, Anthony, Angela, Andre. Let's see who our winner is in just a second. How is this determined? Do you know? Is it just like a... I think it's random. Okay. <laughs> Good luck <laughs> to everybody. based on who's, who's typing the most. Manure. Oh, Angela. Go, 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 go. Okay, Beverly Newburn. Congratulations. Oh, you Wait. just won. Uh, there you go. A hundred <laughs> stickers. And nice. for everyone else, if you go to Sticker Mule and 
uh, you type in Adobe Live 20, you get a huge discount. I think 10 stickers for a dollar. And yes, that's a really good deal. So you guys should check it out if you didn't win any free ones. All right. So we were just talking about your class. Uh huh. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I feel like the educational system is just a little dated, like the current one. And mm -hmm. this is including like some of the colleges that are out there too. And let, let's be honest, there's not really that many great art colleges. And even the ones that are out, that are available, that are great, uh, they cost like an arm and a leg. Yeah, you know so I mean? expensive, it's ridiculous. Uh, and this is specifically in the States. I know in other countries, um, I think like in France, there's one animation studio, it's like I was talking to somebody who went there, it's like Goblins, mm -hmm. I forget exactly the name. Um, but he, he was saying like the tuition there was like six grand for like a year or something like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's so cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's really cheap. Uh, six grand is like one semester. One class of one semester at some <laughs> private art school. <laughs> yes. And so, um, which is so crazy to me because one of uh, America's greatest exports is media. And people don't think of it this way, but it, mm. it actually is, mm -hmm. right? If you think about like a Marvel movie, that's an American export as soon as it goes out to China, India, Korea, wherever, right? Like when you're watching an American movie, that's an American export, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> and not just that, like like uh, phones, um, like uh, all sorts of media stuff, like the apps, games, everything that is like known through entertainment is usually thought of, like like the high standard is thought of like an American product, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like like Mario, for instance, is a Japanese media export. Like we think of Mario as R. Oh yeah, we do. As <laughs> like some sort of like character icon that's from our country, but it re really isn't. We just embraced it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, you know, Nintendo. That's Nintendo's Japanese company. And so, you know, you would think that we'd put more attention to the arts. Um, and so like another thing that frustrates me is that like art is, quite literally everywhere too. Um, I mean, most of you guys are watching this on some sort of device that was designed by some sort of artist. Um, the interface of your device was by some sort of artist. The outfits that you guys wear was designed by some sort of artist. The car that you drive, the shoes that you wear, yeah. you know? Um, when you guys go to watch a movie, play a video game, uh, even in like when you're engaged in uh, Instagram, like there's a graphic designer behind the interface, yeah. you know? Um, and those are heavily art-driven things. In fact, uh, media is one of, you know, I think, or like entertainment and creativity is like one of human, like nature, natural, like reaction to go towards. Like mm -hmm. we always like creative things. Mm -hmm. uh, people like escape through creative ventures, you know? And even through like, caveman drawings like humans are just like we got to draw it's put what, something on the wall you know what i mean yeah it's what separates us from other animals as well i think so i think that is one of the biggest things that makes us um unique against a lot of the other animals is specifically creativity yeah like i don't think that we're actually that much smarter um it's just that we're able to like pick up from the last generation of humans and creatively Turn forward yeah yes. and, and to make it and it just if you keep doing that it just looks like we're so much smarter and better <laughs> but the reality is we're just like we just kind of like copycat yeah. and then just mix things together a lot mm -hmm. and we really like it that's why like movies like jurassic park do really well because it's just a mixture of two ideas like you got dinosaurs on one hand and then you got amusement parks on the other hand and you just put, put them, them together, together and then jurassic park and, and everyone's like oh my god yeah yeah and you look at like star wars you got like a uh, like a, a laser, right? And then you got a sword and you put them together, you got a lightsaber, you know? <laughs> and we're like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. I remember when I saw uh, Darth Maul um, with like the bow uh, lightsaber, like the staff lightsaber, and I was like, of course, that's genius, you know? But it's really simple, yeah. you know, it's a very simple concept. So we got, sorry to interrupt, we got a bunch of questions. I'm just gonna read them out so that we can kind of keep them in the back of our okay, mind great. so we don't miss them anymore. Yes. So, uh, may, 
Maine is saying, how do you spread your work? How did you start? Anthony's, uh, Howard's saying, uh, you've worked for some pretty snazzy companies, but if you could land <laughs> your dream gig overnight, what would uh -huh. it be? And then another person's asking, do I have to be good at drawing to attend your online class? Okay. And then what mediums do you create character development for? Video games, AR, animation. Got it. Got it. So, so since I was still talking about education, I can answer the, the student one. Uh, I take whatever, it doesn't matter. If you have some basic drawing skills, that obviously helps. But if you don't like have a lot, but you want to do this, like you want to be good at concept art, um, like I said, I I teach people because I want to help them out, and I don't really. And I was kind of going off a tangent, but I was originally talking about like our educational system is a little bit dated. Mm -hmm. And going to answer that specific question, the reason why I feel this way is because um, you know, like art is this big thing, and and just like most things. In reality, you need time, and everybody's at different paces. And so, someone might have like a good fundamental skill at something, and another person might have like um, uh, more of like a creative skill. Like, so they're driven by different strengths. So it's weird to kind of have like one curriculum and just be like, "All right, everybody, just draw this," and then either did it or you didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you either did it or you didn't. And this is why some kids, like even in school, like can't keep up with math. It's not necessarily that they don't, they can't learn math. It's just that they're at a different pace. Uh, pace. And math specifically is one of those things. If you miss like one thing, like it, everything else is, does not make sense. Yeah. And I feel like art is very similar. And so for me, uh, the way that I do my classes is that I find where you're at. Like so, let's say you're like again, you're more fundamental. Then I'm like, okay, well then let's practice creative stuff because mm -hmm. you clearly or you're a really good drawer, like you could draw really well, but your ideas aren't as interesting as they could be. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's say someone is really creative, but their drawings are very like loose and not really refined. Then we focus on that. And this will all be in the same class. And what's great is that everybody gets to see what everyone else is doing. So even if like I'm talking to, let's say you about the, your creativity, the other person can listen to what I'm saying to you and be like, oh, you know, that I also kind of too, yeah. makes sense to me, but I won't give them that assignment. I'll give them whatever makes sense for that person. But they will still have like the larger picture in mind all, at all times. Sounds like a great class. Yeah, and I don't grade people because again, like you're in the class to learn. Yeah. And if I put any kind of stress on like, oh, there's gonna be a grade, you know, there's 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 this thing that happens where if you know you're going to fail and there's some sort of judgment, you will stop like working. Mm. And this is true for every field. I'm sure many of you guys have experienced this yourself. This is very relatable. And this is actually detrimental to your growth. It's ironic, right? Like you're paying like for my class, it's like $500 and then you don't do the work. And it's like, you don't realize like, no, this is actually the place where you're supposed to suck yeah. and you're supposed to show me all your bad drawings and you're supposed to show me all your insecurities and just be open about them so we can address them and help you get past them. Yeah. And so I, if I say, oh, you didn't do this exactly like this and really like, you know, like bring the hammer down, um, it may indirectly discourage you where the whole point of getting better is to feel like insecure, feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know. And then talk about it because once you can address your problems, then we can work on them. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as like finishing a lap in a race. So if you never finish the lap, then we don't know what time to beat even if it's slow, mm -hmm. right? Like, let's say it takes you 10 minutes to do one lap, which is really, really slow, but like now we know. And so, okay, halfway through you're like crawling. So yeah, maybe we'll, let's work on yeah. endurance. Mm -hmm. So let's just walk. Like, why don't you just walk around the lap like five times, don't run, just jog, don't jog, just walk, you know? And then you can do that and then we're like, okay, your endurance is better, let's now try to jog again. And now you can go three quarters of the way and you don't crawl this time, you can walk the rest of it. And now we shave two minutes off your time, which yeah. is still slow. But ultimately, we're improving. You got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is this is what I think why schools are outdated because there's some sort of there's like a time limit. Uh, it doesn't like focus on individual paces. Everybody has to go at this pace, and if you can't, then you will fail. And this is why people drop out of school. This is why people feel like, uh, fail classes. Uh, it's not necessarily means that they are failures themselves. They just uh, can't keep up. And it's not their fault. The system is built this way. Yeah. And so uh, I don't really do that. I don't think it makes sense. 
I think a lot of educational systems have it backwards, mm -hmm. you know? They treat failure uh, as a really like negative thing. Like if you fail a test, there's this implication that you're just not smart, where the reality is you just don't know the information. Mm -hmm. A test isn't a, re a reflection of um, who you are forever. It's just who you are now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I try to avoid that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Definitely. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I was trying to remember one of the other questions. The other uh, question was... Yeah, another one was about um, what type of art. Like, do you create concept art more oh, that's right. for animation? That's or... right. I remember now. Yeah, so uh, I work in movies, video games, commercials. So my artwork is just whatever is needed, you know? And so somebody will reach out to me and be like, hey, we're working on this car commercial, and there's like a robot in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right. So I just draw a robot, you know? It's really, the only difference is the pace, okay? Um, and what I mean by this is that in some uh, projects, the pace is like really rapid. You meaning like, um, like specifically commercials and music videos. Oh, okay. They're like, we want this concept art yesterday. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? And so, so then I just have to work faster. Yeah. Which is not too big of a problem for me since I am one of the faster artists in the industry. Uh, I can name probably like 10 other people that I think are as fast, if not faster than me mm -hmm. when it comes to designing. Um, so for me, commercials and uh, music videos is, is not as challenging as it is for some of my uh, you know, colleagues. Um, but speed isn't necessarily a value if you don't need it, right? So when you work in games, uh, you can have like a month to design one character. And it doesn't mean like you just do one painting, like you'll do like series of drawings and you just keep exploring, keep exploring. Mm -hmm. Where in film, like I would have to have like five or six of these things already and then we just have to decide, <laughs> you know? And uh, usually what they do too is they'll hire like a series of artists to get like that like large amount of artwork to kind of really decide which is the best direction. And then just pick one and just make it, you know? Yeah. And so uh, that's how games is, a little bit slower. And in movies, it's somewhere in between where it's like maybe instead of months, it's like weeks, you know, where you have to try to get the design. Like the turnaround for a video game could be like five years easily. And a, a wow. commercial is like a couple weeks. Yeah. And then... Um, There's a huge range. Yeah. And then in movies could be a month, like to kind of like you can work on a project for like a month or two and then you're done. I think the longest I've ever seen somebody work on a movie, uh, generally speaking, is like six months or so which is not that much time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the most I've ever heard is like the Avatar movies, which are like years. And that's specifically film, right? Um, and that's very, that's rare. That's not common. So don't be like, oh, okay, you know, if you work on Avatar, yeah, maybe you can expect to work on it for yeah. the rest of your life. Wow. <laughs> but, um, or for a good significant part of your life. I have a friend who, um, he stopped uh, working on it because it was just too long. It was so long. Dragging on. It's still going. Like wow. it's still in production, I think, in pre-production. But he left like a year or so ago. <laughs> and so it's funny that that it's like still being worked on, yeah. even though he left a while ago. You know. So hey everyone, if you're just joining, I'm here with Anthony Jones, also known as Robot Pencil, and we're doing some concept art, character design here today, and we're working in Photoshop. In about 45 minutes, we're gonna look at some of your daily creative challenges, you can go to the challenge tab in the chat there to see what we're doing today. And we're gonna take a look at some stuff that you've been creating in Photoshop and give you some feedback and critique. So we'll do that in about 45 minutes. And nice. keep the questions coming. Yeah, right on. Yeah, so you're starting a new one now. I am, because I realize that one's fine. I don't mm -hmm. need to add more detail. Um, and so for me, um, Working in the industry is a lot of fun though. Like I really like working in video games and movies. It's cool to see your artwork come to life too. Uh, and I think as a concept artist, what's really great about being a concept artist is that you get to see all these great ideas like before they get made. And so, and help, you know, define whether it's gonna be made a certain way. So for instance, I worked on um, uh, the Sonic movie that's about to come out. I worked on the robots for that movie, and it's cool to like see that it's not 100% what I designed, but like very much inspired by what, uh, what I did. Mm -hmm. And it's cool to see that. And then when I uh, worked on Love, Death, and Robots, that one was like almost 
like what I drew. Wow, yeah, that's and really cool. So it's cool to see both, like yeah. the, like how they made the design better, like for, for whatever reason or however they did it with other artists involved, you know? Uh, or they're just like, no, this is good, and then they just make it, you know? And more, more, mostly my artwork is evolved, like they'll change it uh, in film specifically. But in games, usually they want you to like do a 100% of the design. Um, and the reason why I think it's different is that in films, the workflow is a lot more dynamic. Like the director may have not seen it yet. You have like a produ production designer looking at everything and they're kind of in charge of everything. And then the director finally sees it, but it's like already they're on set and then they have the actors there. So things change. And mm -hmm. so they kind of like make changes. Mm -hmm. And then even after they film and all stuff and they have it in the edit room and they're just like, okay, you know, we got to change this and that. So they can't predict a lot of that but um, they can fix it through post because it's kind of like uh, film is a flat, you know, a media, meaning that like it's just, you can like paint over a frame. Mm -hmm. In a video game, you can't paint over a frame. Yeah. Because it's you can go be behind, yeah, you can go behind, you can go underneath. Uh, oh, and, and so it. they're like, okay, like, let's be certain that this is what we want to do because once I, like, look, let's look at this design, right? So once we approve of this design, mm -hmm. someone has to model it, someone has to texture it, someone has to animate it, someone has to test it in the game, make sure it looks good in the environment, like all these things. So it's it makes sense that in a video game environment, we're really sitting down and making sure this is gonna look good once we actually put it through production. Because even if like I charge a lot of money for this type of artwork, right, uh, they will save tons of money because several people will have their hands on this, you uh, know? Yeah. And so, I mean, if we were to just throw like raw numbers out there, like if I, if I charged like, I don't know, like $20,000 for like two months worth of work, right? Which is a large sum of money for a short amount of time, mm -hmm. but they have uh, five to six people working on this design over a year and they have to pay salaries that are upwards of 60 to a hundred thousand dollars. Clearly, it's going to be cheaper if those person, those people's times are like shortened. They can get this done within several months and versus this, like a whole this year. Is, yeah, kind of right to begin with. Yeah, right? and then starting over again because then that's like another half a year, a year of production. Yeah, that's going to cost them literally millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So, so the concept art industry is clearly of value to people. Uh, Previs is very, very important because it solves a lot of big problems. Uh, the Marvel movies like look fantastic because they have a great concept team. I know many of the artists there, including one of my favorite artists, you know, um, and uh, his name is Ryan Minerding. You'll see his name in the credits. Like they, they pay due to the artist because they recognize that these artists are not only designing a lot of, or solving a lot of problems visually, they're designing characters that are iconic and yeah. people can't wait to cosplay or dress up, you know? Um, like the first Iron Man design, I think was done by Ryan and Charlie Wen, and it's iconic now, mm -hmm. right? Wow. And people still dress up like the, the Iron Man costumes because it's so good, you know? And so for me, uh, I understand the value of like concept art, and I try to help people understand this too. Like our job is to basically save companies money, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to production. Because especially in the creative field, people, think they know what they want, right? They're, oh, I want this design, and they'll tell you all of this stuff, like a director or a producer or whoever's in charge, and then you show them what they said they wanted, and they see it, and they realize they don't they want don't it. Like it anymore, yeah. <laughs> so it's better to do it then than have it go through all the, you know, the, yeah. the process of being uh, produced. Leah's asking, do you cosplay your creations? <laughs> no, I don't cosplay. <laughs> It's like it's a it's a cool idea though. I would love to do that, but uh, it requires time. Yeah. I think cosplay is a, a cosplay is a very serious art too, right? It's not um like I, even when I did a Halloween costume of um, Spider Noir from the Spider Verse, which is just a spider like a mm -hmm. ski mask with goggles and like a hat and like a trench coat. I was like, even that was like work, you know, it was very <laughs> you have simple. You to source all the materials yeah. and make sure it looks right. I just like bought the stuff. And yeah. even then it was like some stuff that I bought just didn't, didn't work. Look good. Yeah, I was like, oh man, like, and I didn't make anything. I just like bought things yeah. and imagining uh, making, making everything. Yeah. I have friends who do that stuff and yeah, it takes some, 
months. I know? saw another question earlier about uh, what your ideal gig would be. Oh, that's right. I remember that one. Uh, I think I already did it. I, I don't think I have any more... Like, I can't imagine a studio that I could work for that would satisfy what I've already achieved. Uh, my favorite company is Blizzard uh, Video Game Studio, and I've worked for Blizzard, mm -hmm. and I loved it. It was great. Um, the kinds of games that I like, the kinds of movies, I've worked on something that was close to what I really enjoy, you know? There's never been a studio that I still is, like, in my sights that I think will fill that void that I thought I had. Yeah. I think the void's already been filled. That's, That's great. Uh, what I really do appreciate, uh, and this is something that I'm working towards, is like education. Again, I, it really makes me happy to help people out and inspire people mm -hmm. and help them get closer to their goals. And so what I'm trying to do is build like a, uh, a proper like Patreon. So I'm working on that right now and it's, it's probably going to launch sometime this week. But a Essentially, I want to like make my full-time job is just straight education. I've done it before, uh, and it was a lot of, it was very fulfilling. But I think I went about it wrong because I put a lot of responsibilities on myself too much, mm -hmm. and so I, I ended up becoming less of an educator and more of like a manager. Mm. I was like managing my business rather than like just focusing on teaching people. I see. So I think like using like other platforms that kind of control a lot of that. Like the blog style of it too is really nice. It's just kind of like I just make content, put it out there, mm -hmm. and people can just get it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like I started streaming uh, every uh, week. And so like I'm just trying to like find ways to just do that and make it so that I don't have to worry about um, money, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And just teach people and people can just go there with an affordable cost mm -hmm. and just learn, you know? But yeah, I don't think there's a studio... Um, that would fill that void. I, I, I can name a couple that I think would still be fun to work for. Like From Software, the guys who made um, a game called Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. That would be really fun. Uh, especially if you look at a lot of my monsters. I think it would fit right in. Yeah. Wow. All right. I also saw a question earlier about this process that you're going through here of like okay, cool. laying down some larger strokes and then going in with the details. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So um, one of the things that I think um, people get wrong whenever they start designing or painting, um, they get really detail-oriented, detail like, too soon. So here, let me kind of talk about this. So when you're, when you're really, like, zoomed in and you're, like, sitting there and you're just really, like, drawing, like, an eye, and you're just like really focused on the eye and you're just like, oh man, mm -hmm. this eye is going to be the greatest thing <laughs> man has ever seen, you know? Mm -hmm. They're going to write stories about how good this eye was, <laughs> you know? And you're just drawing this cool eye yeah. and then you're drawing all this stuff and you're just like doing these features. But when you zoom out, like, like maybe the head is too big <laughs> and then the body is like mm -hmm. tiny, you know? You get like this tiny little body <laughs> and you're just like, oh my gosh. You know, and so, and I know a lot of people right now are having this moment are like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, and when you're zoomed in very often and you're really like detailing, and this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about like people draw, mm -hmm. you know, versus like painting. And if you look at like all old school traditional painters, because um, this, this process is not my process. It's like a process that like people have been doing for thousands of years is that they block in like larger shapes. Right, and they try to get the bigger picture first. It's the and if you get composition, right? Because mm -hmm. you can solve a lot of problems here. You can solve the proportions. You can solve the design elements. All of these things, you know. And I think when you don't do this, like it's yeah, it's going to be harder. There and will what be more problems later for you, right? Yes, that's exactly right. That's perfect insight. And what what you're alluding to is ultimately why people don't paint as quickly as they can, because when you are making a lot of like guesses or you're just kind of painting based off of your impulses, you are more likely to have a lot of errors. And then when you have all these errors, you don't really paint anymore. You're just fixing problems. You're not designing anymore. You're just fixing problems, you know? But if you kind of make a lot of these decisions right away, then you're not fixing anything. Everything's kind of already laid out. So now all you're doing is like, focusing the pic, uh, picture, right? Mm -hmm. You're just like 
taking it out of like out of, out of focus and making it more clear. I see. Versus like, oh, I don't know what was there, mm -hmm. and I just painted the scribble. And now I'm like trying to figure out what it was, or oh, I painted this, but now it's out of proportion. I need to like scale it up and move it there. Oh, this was out of value, or this is the, this detail is out of place. So then you're just fixing your image. Where I'm not fixing my image, I'm just um, making it more focused. Mm -hmm. And whenever you see me make these drastic changes, that's just me making different design choices. There's more information now. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this makes more sense to have a, this image have these details because now that I can see more of the image. But if I was like really zoomed in here and just focused on this and just try to make this look really nice uh, and then zoom out, realize ultimately it's unnecessary what I did there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's a real waste of time and it's a real buzzkill. It really, really demotivates you to finish your painting because you're just like, oh my gosh, that looks garbage. <laughs> and and what you have this like moment of like, oh my gosh, like that took me an hour, and now I have to spend like another hour fixing fixing it. everything yeah. else, and it's just like, but if you're just like sitting here throwing it right, like like I threw this shape right here, mm -hmm. I could just be like, you know what, I don't like it, like I don't think in design, in this design, it doesn't work. You know what, this doesn't work either, and I I'm still in the mode of like. What works, what doesn't work. Yeah. And then once I feel real confident, like with, with this one, for instance, I feel very much confident now of how this image has uh, come to be. So now I can go in there and just detail and render the materials and make this look super, mm. super polished and really high quality. Um, where this one's still in the works. Yeah. Right? And it's only been minutes that I've spent on this, so it's not really like any stress on me. You know, I'm just like, meh, whatever. You know, yeah. I'll make these major changes whenever and however I want. I saw a question about frustration and okay, cool. Um, how you get over that and when you come across that when you're working. Sure. So, um, there, when it comes to like art or any kind of skill, um, this is this is not going to be a, a great answer because it's not going to be helpful <laughs> right away. But I'm going to try to give you some helpful advice. Mm -hmm. um, based off of what I've seen my students have to go through and what I've experienced with people I've taught. Because people that I teach do go through this type of stuff that this person's talking about. Um, I don't really experience frustration the way that I think people would expect when it comes to like getting better at something. And I think the reason why is because I just know that the reason I'm not good at something has nothing to do with me personally. Does that make sense? Yes. Like. I think people take it too personal. I see. Right? Like they, they like, oh man, I'm trying to do this and the shape's not getting put in, like it's not coming together. And they start to like, you know, think, look inwards like, oh, I'm messing Internalized. up. Internalized. It's like, yeah. I can't do it rather than I'm yeah. not practicing or whatever. Yeah. So if you, if you remove it from, I'm the reason why this is the problem. If you start to go into more of like, I'm unskilled, right? If you think of it more of like, oh, the reason why this is hard and why I'm struggling is not because of me personally, it's because I'm unskilled. Mm -hmm. Remember I was using the example of like going to the weight room and just lifting stuff up, right? Yeah. You know, if you, um, like, this This is like, I don't want to talk about this too much because I, I'll get real emotional, <laughs> but um, but like Kobe Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. And recently he, he just passed. Yeah. And I, yesterday I was a wreck, man, it messed me up. Mm -hmm. um, but I always use him as an example because what Kobe Bryant represented was someone that worked really, really, really hard. And although he is taller than me, although he has like the, the physique that would make him a great ball, ball player, which he was, and he even admitted that he had, may had some God-given talent, um, that's ultimately not what made him a better basketball player than me. You know what I mean? What made him the great player that he was, was not because he was taller, not because he was genetically gifted or more talented, because he went against people that were equally at that level. Mm. It's because he was the first one in, the last one out. Me and my friend were talking about all the stories. That's why I don't want to talk too much about it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's very tragic and he symbolized everything that I think people should focus on is like, he knew that he just needed to put the time in, right? He just needed to put the time in and when you start to think in that world, right, you start to think about like uh, what you need to do every day versus like, oh, how I feel today, right? It goes back to the motivation. Instead of saying, oh man, like this is really hard to finish, just say, I'm just gonna paint or draw for an hour. 
regardless of how I feel, regardless of how terrible my artwork is, because uh, in the chat, you guys can all, <laughs> I can see the chat, everyone's like, here Everyone comes a few. Everyone's <laughs> sending you hearts. <laughs> no, like, uh, uh, it was rough, man. Um, especially like the, the, the whole thing, how it happened. Mm -hmm. It was really, it was really sucky. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things that I think is very important is that like, if you, if you just give yourself like a very specific um, goal that has nothing to do of the quality of your work. And if I asked everybody in the chat, everybody in the chat answer with like, I agree. And if you agree with this, that the more you do something, like let's say the more you draw or the more you paint, the better you'll become. Uh, I'm almost certain nobody in here is gonna say, oh no, I don't agree with that. Everyone's gonna agree with this. And if you know that this, this is true and there's you're finding yourself not doing that because you just don't like how you feel that day or you don't like uh, how your artwork came out, you, you do realize that that is actually counter to what you genuinely believe. Because uh, of course you're not gonna be good at something if you don't practice it. And when you start to practice it and you reveal to yourself how bad you are, of course you're gonna feel frustrated, mm -hmm. but that's irrelevant. You should just go anyway. And that's ultimately what makes the difference between people who don't achieve their dreams and goals versus people like Kobe, who just said, I, it doesn't matter. I remember a really great story about how he was really bad at three pointers. And so for the off season, he just shot three pointers mm -hmm. like all day. And he, he had like a system where he would only shoot or he would only leave the gym or something if he made like 1200 points or something crazy. I don't know if that's the exact number, yeah. but I'm, I wouldn't doubt that that was true. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean like 1200 shots, I mean 1200 points. So he could have easily made 6,000 shots and missed the majority of them. He would leave until he made 1200 points or something crazy. And so it had nothing to do with how badly he was doing. It was more about like, I have this goal and I have to achieve it. And once I have, then I can say I've done the work I needed to do today. Yeah. It's if like, you, what's gonna get you there? You need yes. to do that. And if you have that same philosophy, I, I'm just gonna draw, um, you know, five robots, like just sketch them out every day you know, I'm only gonna spend an hour doing it. I'm just gonna do real rough sketches just to get it in, mm -hmm. get those reps in. And you do that for years, you're gonna get really good. It's just- It's, it's just like the gym. That's yeah. such a great uh, analogy that you made earlier where it's like, you have to, if you wanna get better, if you wanna get to a certain point, you just go there, bring yourself to it and do it, and then you'll see, see changes from the practice, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think for whatever reason, uh, Art has been treated like some sort of, um, like some sort of like gift mm -hmm. from the heavens, you know, <laughs> that you either are an artist or you're not. Yeah. But the reality is that um, creativity and artistry is built into us, is actually beaten out of us when we go to school. If you go to school, like I have kids, and when they go to school, they do art stuff. Like eventually they're gonna stop, but why? You know, like why do they stop? Mm -hmm. You know, from an early age, we're always like doing stuff that's very creative, very artsy. It's only until later that for whatever reason, we are told to stop doing that, you know? Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, I think that's a mistake, you know? And so art is treated like, oh, well, it's like this kind of like not a real job. When in reality, if you took art away, like if you took all the art that people experience, just took it away. What would we have? People would notice. Yeah. Lots of people would notice, and lots of people would be freaking out. <laughs> you know what I mean? They'd be freaking out real quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, I mean, I, I have a TikTok. I don't know if you've heard of TikTok. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do so, you make videos and dance and? <laughs> no, I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> I, I try to stick to my brand, which is like art stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but, that's what I'm saying. Like, people are dancing and singing and like doing funny videos and it's really creative it's so creative it's it's i love uh scrolling through and laughing all it's day it's just yeah it's just raw human like experience most of the time and just like everything like depending on what you click on and what you watch it'll keep showing you that stuff so my my tiktok's actually full of artists which is great um and sometimes like those hilarious like videos that people put out there because they're funny yeah a lot of them are really funny <laughs> Like there was this one with a cat and it, was, it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. 
Dave is saying, man, Anthony, you're so inspiring. Thanks for this. I needed this. Even oh, if great. I feel that I fail often, I'm still trying and believing. Thanks, my friend. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Well, let me, let me give you some more security to that. So whenever people think about failure, right? Think of it like this is like a list of stuff that has happened to you. So, you know, sometimes you get a win and sometimes you fail, you fail. Man, it seems like you fail a lot, right? And then you win and then fail and then maybe win and then you fail right for whatever reason people look at this kind of like these failures as it's taking away from you but the reality is even though it's a failure or success you're you're actually gaining information so it's all positive mm -hmm. enforcement it's not negative meaning that like if i failed at something it doesn't then make me less wiser it actually makes me more wise you're i have more wisdom that experience yes Right, like if I know that the stove is hot by touching it, now I know that's experience gained, not mm -hmm. experience lost. So when you do a painting and you fail, uh, having this perspective is way more rewarding. You start to realize that those failures are actually gonna make you better than the other artist who is not experiencing these failures. Mm -hmm. You start to learn what not to do rather than only learn what to do because it's more more or less about what not to do, to be honest, right? When I was uh, studying uh, art, I used to copy a lot, meaning that I would look at a piece of artwork and I would just copy it verbatim. Mm -hmm. And at, when I first did that, I thought I was like the king of the world because all of my copies looked really good. But then I started realizing that whenever I tried to draw just from my imagination, nothing would come. Like I had nothing, oh, I was like shooting blanks. And I was like, what the hell? And I, I'd spend all this time like, studying and then I realized that I wasn't really studying I was just like looking at a series of pixels and moving it to another series of pixels which is a skill for mm -hmm. sure but not the skill that I needed for the jobs that I wanted and so I was like oh my gosh I actually have to know what I'm painting uh, not like be able to observe what I'm painting you know and those are two different skills and once I learned that I started to study uh, more effectively. I started to do stuff where I'll look at a reference and then I'll turn it off and then try to remember what I drew or what was there. Yeah, wow. Versus like just having it there and just kind of like have some assistance. Mm -hmm. I would look at it after to kind of correct my like my work, but not during. I would look at it and be like, okay, mm -hmm. I think I see what's good, cool about this and then I'll just draw. Uh, and I'll do that a lot. Uh, I carry like a sketchbook with me and what I would usually do is like I'll just draw people as they're passing. Obviously, they can't stay still. They're like living their lives. I'm like, hey, stop, I'm drawing <laughs> you. Um, but I just try to get the essence of what I saw and try to draw it. And so I practice that because it's helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. But see, I've learned what not to do. I learned that like I shouldn't just stare at something and just assume that I should be able to draw well now from just staring at it and copying it some, to some other image. Uh, another thing I learned not to do was like gather reference for like long periods of time. You know what I mean? I call that positive uh, procrastination because it oh. feels like you're being productive, you're working, but you're not. But really, all you're doing is anything. yeah, all you're doing is collecting a bunch of art. Anybody could do that. Yeah, and it gives you this feeling like you're really accomplishing. Like, look at all this great taste I got, which is probably true. You have a really great taste, but can you then make that into something? That's a whole different thing. So I started learning that okay, I should take my time and I should like slow down. You know, I shouldn't look at. A million images at once. I should just look at a couple and really take a lot from them. And that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I learned what not to do. If I was making that mistake, I had to make that mistake, come to terms with what the mistake was, you know, and now put it into my wisdom, right? Like, okay, now I know what not to do. Mm. You know, whenever I was drawing, I used to draw like this, like I was talking about earlier. But I learned just draw, like, don't do that because it, it's demonstrating lack of confidence where you should just be confident mm -hmm. and if you if you can't be confident it's not because uh again anything personal it's because you don't have skill and so acquire the skill you know what i mean and hopefully that helps you out like even more realizing those failures are actually part of the deal yeah <laughs> you're supposed part to have of the learning process yeah. you'll gain from it it's 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 not a bug it's a feature yeah <laughs> Yeah, so knowing that is, like I said, it's very empowering because then you realize, oh, shoot, like many people, uh, many other people cannot uh, withstand that that stress, 
mm-hmm. right? And so that's when they stop. Mm-hmm. If you can, you'll be surprised of how successful you'll become. There's a comment about social media bombardment of all of the best of the best and how that can kind of okay, take yeah. you down. I don't know. Do you have thoughts on that? So just like being overwhelmed by like all these other great artists. Is that kind of what you're yeah, saying? Like just seeing I all this. So. It's like the lifestyle uh, stuff too. Where everyone's like, look how awesome my life is. Exactly. And, and it's just like nobody's life's that awesome. And if they are, there's only like a few of them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, you got you to gotta remember it's just... Um, it's just a perception and it actually has nothing to do with you. So if you're looking at all these great artwork and you're just like, it's just like a reflection of like what you're not able to do. This is, I understand this, you know? And I, I get that too, man. I feel that pain. But the reality is that like, um, it doesn't affect you though, like actually, right? Like someone else doing whatever they're doing has no effect on you, specifically in this case, right? because they're doing whatever they're doing because they love it and they like it. And then the reality is that if you really look back at when they first started, it's very, very obvious that they also probably weren't very good and they just kept with it. And what you're witnessing and what you're seeing from these people is the, the version of them that has been you know, catered and molded and sculpted over many years. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I have never met an artist, and I'm sure you guys don't know anybody like this either, who, where I met them and I was like, man, your artwork's so great. And they're just like, oh yeah, you know, one day I just woke up and I just started drawing and, and then I became an art right? director. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, and now I'm like an awesome art director on these, all, all these projects. I don't know anybody that's like that. Everybody that I know or I, that I've ever met is the opposite. Like, oh man, it was hard. Like I, I was like a, raising my two kids. I lived out of my car. I was homeless. You know, like there's like, it's, there is no story where everyone's like, oh yeah, no, it was easy. Like yeah. this, this is really easy to do. <laughs> Nobody, I don't know any single person that's like that. Uh, and you will also be the same way. You're gonna talk about this potentially one day with your friends or other artists that may admire you in the future. And they're gonna ask you the same thing like, oh man, what did you do? And you're gonna remember that it was hard for you as well. And you're gonna also encourage them just like I'm encouraging you. Like you wanna be that person that says, oh, you know what, I also had these uh, hardships, but this is how I overcame them. And this is how, uh, I, you know, got past it. Everybody in here will be there too. So I think it's, when you start to look at people's like excellence and compare yourself, compare yourself to them in that way, it's really uh, counterproductive because you are putting yourself down for no real reason. Um, you are, it's, it's like if I put you in a foot race with Usain Bolt, and you've never trained, like, of course you're gonna lose, you know, but I'm not gonna then be like, oh man, you're so slow, like yeah. you suck at running. <laughs> of course, of course you're not gonna be able to beat an Olympic runner um, who's been training all their life. And so it's kind of like, you should think of it this way. So, so if you ever wanna be able to compete against Usain Bolt, you just gotta do what he does, or he did, which is train yeah, a lot. All the time, yeah. And you may still not beat him, right? Like that's still a possibility where you might come second. Like he just will always be faster than you. But guess what? You're the second fastest person now Mm -hmm. in the world, Mm -hmm. right? Even if you're ranked 500 in the Olympics, right? Nobody even knows your name because you're that uh, far behind in the ranking of people that can uh, beat you. There's 499 other people, right? You're still uh, the 500th fastest Fastest person person in the world (laughs) and there's i don't know if you know this there's seven billion people right currently so that means you're really doing okay and i think in this field of work that actually has a lot of relevance like you could be literally like the hundred thousandth if there was like a skill Mm -hmm. if there's actually if that actually existed and you're like a hundredth like most preferred artist hundred thousand uh you would still do well in our industry you know what i mean like there's still plenty of room for for great artists, maybe not like the master level or taking all the good, really, really, really crazy good jobs, but there's still really great jobs and fulfilling jobs that you can get from being a great artist, you know? Uh, I don't even consider myself amongst master level. Um, I actually talked about this in a stream Mm -hmm. that I'm aiming towards that now. I'm gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna try to go master level Mm -hmm. artist, and it's probably gonna take me another 10 years. It's gonna take me a while. Yeah. When I'm like, you know, sorry to get some real grays in my beard. (laughs) And I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna look the part too, you know? It's gonna be great, I'm gonna grow like really long. Yes. <laughs> Whip it out. Oh my gosh. But that's gonna take time and I'm very aware of this, yeah. you know? So I don't think um, that's a good 
thing to do to yourself. It's, it's not healthy. Um, what you should do instead is be like, uh, when you look at these artists, just re be reminded that they also started somewhere and that they're a goal to achieve. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to try to be at the level of these artists and I'm going to constantly remind myself of that. Yeah, like, instead that, of comparing yourself to them. Like, right now. That's not a fair comparison, you know? You got to put that time in. Seriously, if you ever get a chance to talk to these artists, ask them, like, how long have they been painting? You won't be, you won't be disappointed. They're going to tell you, like, years if not decades and you said you've been doing this for 12 years yes and so there's no accident that i can paint quickly mm -hmm. is what i'm getting at mm -hmm. like that's why i wanted to start with the disclaimer because i think people get really caught up in like what the yeah you know? like, how did you just do that yeah and it's it's a matter of just practice right? tons of practice lots of it yeah is there any other questions actually it took me 10 years to be an artist, I am, and six years of design to become a designer I am today. Yeah. Dude, look at that. See, some people in the chat are even like, yep, speaking truth. Dana <laughs> said, there's a great quote, and it is, sometimes good is better than finished. If Absolutely. you strive for perfection, sometimes you put too much time in. Yeah, I think that's a great, great idea. Um, like this idea of just not always going for perfection. Mm-hmm. There was this great study, I don't remember where it's from, or if it's even true, but this, whether this is a fantasy story I'm about to talk about, yeah. it's still a really good message, and I, I agree with this principle. So this, um, this uh, pottery instructor wanted to see if quantity was better than quality, and so he had one half of his students, all they focused on was quantity, doing mm -hmm. tons and tons of... Uh, pottery and he said basically depending on the pounds uh, of weight that's how you're gonna be graded so if you have 40 pounds of pottery then I'm gonna give you an A and then 30 pounds B etc and then said on the other side all you guys need to do is just make the most epic pot ever like it's got to be perfect but just one single yeah. pot wow. and so at the end of the class uh, when people did this for the whole semester they all submitted their work and he said just put it Everybody just put your uh, pots like on this thing and don't label it, just put it there. And everybody put their pots on the, the on display. He brought in all the students from the, the school to, to judge, which was the best artwork, or sorry, the best pot. And ultimately, the ones that won were the ones that were from the quantity pile. Mm. Okay, the people who just did it for the, just get amount of weight. more and more yeah. and more. And what he deducted, and I think this is true, is that because they weren't focused on perfection, they were focused on how to distribute the weight, right? So they were making like these really unique pots so they can like try to like, oh. instead of just making like a bunch, they're like, this is gonna take me forever. So they were like, okay, what if I can like make it like swirl up and, and like get really like a heavy. support? Yeah. And then just started getting really creative and started having these really unique looking pots where the, um, the people that were making, they were just like, Mm -hmm. They were actually, some of them were just kind of garbage because they just couldn't get it perfect. There's a little bit bumpy here, a little imperfect there. And um, what I took away from that was very much that, like this idea that like if you are just constantly thinking of perfection, um, for one, you're, you're just not going to get there. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's ever made like a perfect piece of artwork. Um, really, really great ones, but not perfect. And then two, um, you're really handicapping yourself the whole time. Right, because you're just focused on like making sure everything is so so perfect, perfect yeah. and it might be stunting your creativity as well. You might forgot you might have forgotten what you're doing in the first place. Yeah, right? I call this the art artistic bias, where the artist has their own personal feelings about what's going on with the artwork, uh, and then when they show it to other people, they're like confused to why um, they're confused to why the work isn't being received well by others, mm -hmm. right? And it's because when you're painting something, you're learning, you're adapting, or you have some uh, very specific goals that nobody can ever see. They don't feel that, they just see your final product. Yeah. So when you're being so perfect and you rendered that fingernail so <laughs> good, some people might not even appreciate it because they don't care. They're just looking at the big picture. Yes. So having all that perfection may actually be a distraction to what's actually happening, like the actual artwork that you put in front of people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I'd encourage, yeah, a better habit of just focusing on, um, yeah, quantity, right? And doing quality every so often based off of your quantity, you know? 
Like if you do like a lot of drawings, pick the best one and then make that one your your life's work, right? Yeah. Versus just out of the Focusing box. Focusing on just one. Yeah. And that's the only one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, actually? I think uh, I think there was uh, some talk about procrastination and getting over a slump. Oh, okay, okay. That, that one's a good one. So, um, with procrastination, uh, I think I think with procrastination, it's I think it's just natural. I think it's human nature. I think animals are just naturally lazy, right? Like I like the all the animal species just lie around all mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? They don't really And then do they it. get up to eat and yeah, hunt, they, and then they go take Yeah, yeah, and then they make babies. That's yeah. pretty much it. Make babies, <laughs> eat, and like sleep all day. Yeah. Like even like the majestic lion, like just laying around They're all just the time. hanging out. Yeah, they're just hanging out. Uh, I think the koala evolved so much just to be lazy. Like I think so a koala- hang up in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> like in one spot forever, their whole life. They're yeah. just like, I'm just gonna live here. <laughs> I don't have to do anything else. So you have to realize you're actually, I don't think that it's um, like, I think it's better to think of it as like, you're fighting your natural instinct is what I'm getting at. I think humans are naturally, there's, there's just, there are those exceptions that really aspire us. But I think naturally you're fighting against um, this, this feeling. And so if you know this, if, or at least if you, if you believe this, that I'm trying to explain, I, I think it's true. Um, then you need to start to make your basic state of laziness where you feel the most relaxed productive does that make sense yeah so so if you normally wake up and you're on your phone and you're just like on tiktok for like two hours then that's your basis of laziness right and but if you get up and let's say go for a run right and that's what makes you feel good because you've done it for years now that's your basis that's your baseline of procrastination because it doesn't feel like it because you're yeah, just like I you like just to get run. up and do it right? you, you enjoy it and so at first that kind of stuff is not gonna feel enjoyable your mm -hmm. body's like what are you doing here yeah your body's kind of like a, a, a supportive and overprotective parent <laughs> right like like especially when you go to art school they're like, oh my gosh no you know? <laughs> they're like no we're not gonna stay up late we're yeah not yeah gonna do that. yeah because they want you to be like a lawyer a doctor an engineer like the only three jobs right <laughs> and so if you don't do those things they're worried about you because for a good reason like if you don't educate them about the arts they're, they're just gonna think you're gonna be one of those people that make a banana put on a duct tape on a wall mm -hmm. and just call it art and mm -hmm. then hopefully win the lottery <laughs> and so so I understand that sen sentiment. So your subconscious is, in your brain is very much the same way. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you doing, man? Like, this is real uncomfortable. Like, you're, you're trying to learn, like, this new thing. Like, we, we got all we our tools. Yeah. yeah, we got all our, all our tools, man. What are you doing? Just, you know what? Just pull up that, you know, that video game and just let's, let's play. Oh, let's, let's watch TikTok. Mm -hmm. it's so nice. Mm -hmm. And so if you let your subconscious kind of guide you, it's always going to guide you to comfort. But what's what's unfortunate is that your um, your cognitive brain is always aware of what a waste you may have put yourself through, and there's this kind of like cognitive dissonance where your subconscious is kind of like, dude, let's just chill, man. Mm -hmm. Let's just like lay back and be lazy because that's its job. Its job is like to conserve energy and just be chill. Yeah. But then the other side of your brain is like, what are we doing? Like we just sat here for literally three hours watching people dance on TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like what what are we doing with our lives? And so once you start to realize that this is a, a reality, you need to start to reshape your subconscious. You know what I mean? And it takes time. I don't think it will happen overnight. Like you gotta like instead of three hours, just do a two hour session of TikTok. You know, like <laughs> yeah. no seriously, like don't like pull turkey because that doesn't work either. Yeah. Cause um Jim's uh memberships rely on this philosophy of like you know it's the new year i'm gonna join the gym and work out and then you like complete for six months and don't go yeah yeah <laughs> complete lifestyle change yeah. overnight right it's gonna happen no it's never gonna happen but if you say you know what i'm gonna do 10 push-ups 10 sit-ups and 10 squats every morning mm -hmm. just start there mm -hmm. that is something you can do right now it's gonna probably take you 15 minutes of your time but then you're like oh i can do more and then you do an hour of it then you're like, you know what now i'm gonna go to the gym lift some weights and after like six or seven months of doing that, your your new baseline is I, I feel like I have to go to the gym. Like yeah. I need to go. Like even when I um, flew in last night, I was like, I need to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So I just went to the 24 hours that was next to me 
and I just worked out. Even if it was I only worked out for 30 minutes because it was already late. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I just need to do it. And it wasn't because of this kind of profound, like, um, I got to work hard, play hard, you know. It was just like, I felt like it I had to work habit, out. Right? Yeah, I was, like, I was like, my body needs it. Wow, that's great and to so, turn these goals into small, bite-sized changes that I become mean, habits. It's, right. it's just the reality, like, there's many good books about this. There's a book called Eat the Frog, and the whole idea is that, like, if you were to eat, like, a frog, like, all, all in once, um, you wouldn't do it because it's, like, a whole creature. But if I were to, like, cut little pieces of it and <laughs> yeah. gave it to you every day... Yeah, then you would eat a whole frog. Yeah, ultimately, you would eat a whole frog. And um, I think that that system of thinking makes way more sense. And so um, fighting against your procrastination is a lifestyle thing. You can't just do something. I can't tell you something right now that you should do. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your life circumstances are. If you work full time, if you have people that you take care of, or if you have all the time in the world and you just have focus issues or time management issues. Uh, I don't know. There's going to always be something that's different for everybody. Yeah. But the the baseline thing that I know that works is like make small adjustments. Mm -hmm. Small adjustments that build up to like a new standard of lifestyle. And then you'll just start living it, you know? Wow. That's very inspirational. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. So we have a couple minutes until our design feedback countdown. We're going to look at the Discord in a bit. And today's challenge is create a double exposure selfie using masks and blend modes. So if you guys have created stuff in Photoshop for that, go ahead and submit that so we can take a look at it in a few minutes. <clears throat> All right, cool. And we can also take a look at some of the creative challenges from Friday, which have some text on a postcard. And I think the challenge was to edit your text using selections and masking and clipping masks. So we'll take a look at all of that in a few minutes. Now, some last minute questions. Anthony sure. Jackson is asking, how do you put together your portfolio when you have an interview? Um, <clears throat> I just put the best work that I have available, um, for the people that I might work for. But, um, like sometimes I want to get a job and I'll just like put all my robots together if I know it's like a job that's robot based or a creature based or whatever. Um, but ultimately the way that I get my work now is I just post artwork everywhere mm -hmm. and I post the kind of artwork that I like. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's the artwork that I want to make. And in the beginning, it wasn't like this, but definitely I encourage this like personal portfolio strategy where you just build a portfolio that you personally would like to do, right? And just put it out there so that people will see it and be like, hey, this person like draws the things that I want to draw or this person has like the artwork that I want to see in my movie, you know? And that's how I get jobs these days. People literally reach out and say, hey, we saw your creature design. Like, can you do that for us? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yeah. And then they, they tell me what they want. I do it. And then they pay me. And it's nice. You know, it's like I would have done it anyway. Uh, but this way, it's theirs now. And they can use it and put it into their projects. So I think building a portfolio based off of, like, um, what you personally like is a good strategy. Um, here's a couple of things to keep in mind, though. Uh, if you if you like something that's incredibly niche, right? I don't know, like you have like a goat riding like a rocket, <laughs> and that's all you do is just yeah. goats on rockets. Uh, I don't know that many projects that are looking for goats or rockets and at least them together. Mm -hmm. Maybe the rockets you have more chance of a good chance. There's a video game called Goat Simulator, so maybe there's a chance there. But <laughs> but even then, I think they don't need you because they just get like a regular goat and they just you know they don't need a designer. <laughs> so so like. Know that that's a thing. Um, you should still do that, but you should also put things that may be uh, like parallel or adjacent to that. So maybe you would draw like robot goats, <laughs> you know, or um, cool rockets or that have goat symbols on them, but they're like designed really cool. So then somebody, somebody can see that you could probably, instead of a goat, maybe you can make that a gorilla, mm -hmm. right? And for their video game, like Overwatch has like a gorilla mech looking character. And if you have something like that in your portfolio, they might, they can see how that you, it wouldn't be that much of a leap to mm -hmm. just change the animal, mm -hmm. even though you really love goats. <laughs> you know, that's your favorite thing to draw. 
But yeah, that's my advice. Just build a portfolio around things that you really, really like. Yeah, that's great advice. All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and look at the Discord now for the daily creative challenge. So let's see what you all made. Oh, wow. And we're gonna give some feedback. So today's challenge was to create a double exposure selfie using some masks and blend modes. So let's see, this one's cool. It's moving. So they made a GIF. Oh. Right on. Oh, okay, so I can see your face here. Wow, oh. so you got a mask going on at the top, I think, with those speckles. And then we have some birds and a sunset. This is pretty cool. So some feedback for this. I think it's a little bit hard for me to see the outline of your face with all of the speckles around it. So maybe if yeah. you want to have that outline more visible, maybe put the speckles on the other side. I think it's hard to just tell the difference between that. So that's my Yeah, I wasn't feedback. even sure that there was a face until you said Can that. Can you see that here? I think. Uh, I don't right know. Right here. Yeah, so I think what you're saying is pretty accurate. Like one of the things that, now I don't normally do like graphic design or sort of uh, illustrations using photos, but like uh, one thing that's pretty true for most disciplines is a balance between contrast and uh, unity. So. Um, when you have a lot of contrast, which this image does, so you have a lot of specular like dots, like all the ink blotches everywhere, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, a large assortment of birds flocking, right? And then behind that you have uh, like a, a really, you know, elaborate cloud system. Uh, there's a lot of information. So you would need to find a way to unify all of these elements in some way, because right now they're all separate, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just kind of like, um, it doesn't feel like organized. And so if I had to take a stab at this, uh, one thing that I might do, like you were saying, like it's a, let's say it's a face. So if I was gonna say, okay, this is like a flock of birds and like it's like in the clouds, whatever, I would like first make sure that the face is very, very clear. Yeah. And that, that what we're really looking at, like the simplicity of like the ink blotches are just going around like as, as, if, as if I threw it and it just made like a face mm -hmm. and there's some texture here, but it's clearly like a head or a face, yeah. whatever. And then you could put whatever like really complicated design or texture inside of that and it would feel pretty cool because at least we know we're looking at like a, a head or whatever shape. Because right now, like honestly, I don't even see the face. Like it just seems like an abstraction. Mm -hmm. And then inside, inside is more of abstraction. And so something needs to unify the whole image and then everything you do after that will be a little bit easier to understand. Cause I think it's cool to have like uh, this negative space. In fact, I have thing, I think I have some images in my Pinterest. They're actually very much like this. They're oh, just like, okay. but it's like, but it is like a, it's like a person and you can actually still see their face too. It's mm -hmm. like kind of like a soft, like opacity to it. And then it'll be like some sort of like um, image, kind of, of like where they're from. So yeah. there's some sort of correlation there. Okay. No, nothing here is like uh, relating to each other. And I think if someone were to see this, they wouldn't be sure how to feel about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what really works though is the colors. I think the colors are nice. Yeah, I like the colors too. And they're very natural. And so, and I'm sure it's from the image mostly. And you probably did some um, adjustments to make it pop even more. Yeah, that's good. So your your sense of color, or at least your your taste for what works in terms of um, temperature and all that stuff, is already naturally driven. You just need to now have everything focused. Mm -hmm. And I think this image would be a lot better. That's great feedback. Oh, next one. Cool. Wow. Okay. So we have that face here as well. Okay. And this one, I can see it a bit more. Yeah. So you can see, this is a great example of like, it's working a lot better because we can see the face. But then uh, but then the problem now, because like at least with the other one, we, we could say there's like a birds flocking and then there's like an environment. Mm -hmm. This one we have just like, there's so, like I'm not sure if this is a collage of leaves or this is branches. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is, if I had to guess. I think so too. But then there's just like this, uh, can I like, oh, I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> frame. So like uh, like right in the middle, there's like a gray negative space, right? It looks like her hair. So that that's unclear to me what why that's still there. I, if I 
if I had a choice, I would have just went all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Make it like all leaves or like, see how it's kind of deteriorating like at her cheeks? Like, which way am I? Yeah. yeah. Like right around here, it starts to deteriorate. I would like keep it deteriorating until it just fades into the background. And the gradations that you have, um, I think are like, do yourself a favor, make a new layer, uh, fill it up with black and put it on color mode. And then you'll see just um, the black and white image. And you'll see that there's like a competing contrast with your gradation. I think your background should not at all compete with this subject because she's so complicated and there's a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. So the background should also be like, like, or should counter that, right? So if, if the subject matter is really detailed and textured, then this should be, or the, I'm sorry, if the character is like really detailed and textured and the background is also has some sort of contrast to it, it's going to be competing too much. So I would make the background much simpler. Uh, and then also I would try to have that like fall off that I said. Yeah, but also make it very clear like what we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of the leaves coming off of the head, but I, I do think that it could be more clear, especially that area in the middle where mm -hmm. at least have it covered or something, but. Yeah, what I really like about this image, what I think is working well uh, other th that this artist did is that they, um, that it's really creative mm -hmm. and it's really fascinating. Like, I think if this was executed well, like sometimes people get confused that their their painting is bad, where um, their design is actually the thing to fix. And sometimes it's reversed where they, the design is really good, but the execution isn't really well. I think it's this one, like okay. where I think the design, like the idea behind it is actually really excellent, you know? And, but it's, I'm distracted because of how the elements are put together they're not put together in the most optimal way, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's it's really good though, like the, the idea behind it. Yeah, I think so too. So next up we have the challenge from Friday. So this was to play with some type on mm. a postcard. This is really and out of my are... skill set for sure. <laughs> not a type person at all. I like good type though. Yeah. And people do a good job. I think it, we can just give our feedback okay. based on what what we're thinking here. I like I like this wave stuff you got going on here. I think it's interesting. I do think that it's a little bit hard to see. Mm -hmm. In this one's easier to see, but here I think it goes back to that contrast thing where mm -hmm. it's blend, it's so light and it's blending into the background image a lot. You have some gradation going on as well, which is interesting, but I want it to stand out more and this seems more muddled, ex especially because the background seems so detailed and mm -hmm. then the type is also a bit smaller. So there's not enough contrast within size as well here. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree with all that. And so um, like disclaimer, I'm not like a type person, so I wouldn't be able to give you the tools to uh, correct this. Like you probably want to reach out to the person that would know how to do this and have more of like a concrete understanding. But I can tell you what I do know mm -hmm. and what I think is uh, that is help, would be helpful for you. So so graphic design and type uh, usually has to be clear because it's messaging, right? And so uh, I know for a fact like you would have to, to zoom out mm -hmm. and I would still have to know what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Because what if I'm looking at the sign literally like a quarter of a mile away? Would I know what I'm looking at? Right, and so if I don't, then obviously you're not sending the right message, right? Mm -hmm. It just looks like a cool little image from afar. And so I, I know that much, right? In fact, there's a reason like Instagram used to have 3D text or a 3D icon like for their yeah. camera. It was like an actual like 3D camera with uh, lighting and everything. But now it's just like a graphic image. Yeah. And the reason why is for the, the reason I just gave, because if you were to just now just make it a black and white image, right? And zoom out, you would know that that's the Instagram logo. But it, with the original one, it would just look like a blur. It would just kind of be like overly textured. And I think with the text, you need to kind of like have that same thing. So like, if I have to try to read what you wrote, that I think that's ultimately the problem, right? At least with that, that first image, you know, but if we look at the other ones, I just noticed that there's other ones. There's much. These are much easier. Yeah, to those read. are these are 
highly more successful. Yes. And I think the, the problem here is the gradation is uh, very similar to the value of the lettering. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. Um, so, oh, my alarm too. <laughs> Everything's going on at the same time. That's my alarm to go drop off my son. Oh. So, but uh, obviously I cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the second image there is probably by far the, well not that one, go back up. So this one, the values are all too similar. The this one? Yeah, I'm sorry, the first one. I didn't realize, they're all the first array of images. Yeah, you're right. The second one and third one on this one uh, read the best mm -hmm. because the lettering is very clear. In fact, if I had to make them even more clear, like if I if this is my job, which is not my job, uh, but I, I know contrast and value, I would grab one of the colors or the hues of the gradation and kind of do a wash behind the city so that the letter, the white of the letters and a darker wash. So Stands the white out. of the letters would stand out more. Yeah, yeah that's great feedback. But again, um, there are people that might have even more elegant solutions that are on the same wavelength is mine, mm -hmm. but like I said, I don't have the tools to explain it, so I apologize for that. But hopefully that insight at least drives you in the right direction. Okay, so I saw Dama said she wants us to look at hers. So is, okay, great. I think this might be... This is definitely a more along the It has nothing to do with the challenge, but I want you to see the piece. I love doing <laughs> fan art. I'm struggling yeah, with anatomy, but now I'm feeling the struggle in the back. Okay, interesting. Well, yeah, this is more along the lines of what you're familiar this with. This is what I do for a living, is look at stuff like this and give feedback on. I think, yeah, we can totally do that. Yeah, let's right do now. at least this one. This would be good. So, um, it's great. She already like recognized that she needs to work on anatomy, so great. Uh, I would agree. Um, so let's talk about what's successful. I think the design is good. This is, again, how I determine if the design is good, is if I took the same concept that you did, or this piece of painting that you drew, drew and if I drew it, mm -hmm. like I didn't change anything. I put the crown, like the hair, the jewelry, the armor, but I just made it a little bit more polished. Like if I just took the same idea and just painted it in my style, would it be successful? I think it would be. And if that's true, then it's more of an execution thing. And so for me, um, we can't like zoom in on parts, but like a good example would be like uh, the boot. On, oh yeah, there you go. On the very, go to the, yeah, there you go. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just looking at this boot, this is boot alone, right? It's a good representation of like what you need to work towards. So you look at the bottom part of the boot, right where the mouse cursor is almost at. Um, yeah, like right around there. There's like a little bit of like a, um, actually I could probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me drive a little bit. Yeah. Like right here, like that little hiccup, like in this kind of uncertainty of uh, like line weight. And there's like a lot of that like kind of inconsistency throughout the design. All that adds up to make it feel like a lower quality drawing, okay? Mm. So, I, and I'm almost certain, certain you know what I'm talking about because you have artists that I'm sure you look at to do line art that are like exceptional line artists. And they, they don't have this problem. They don't have this like, uh, like inconsistency of line. And usually what this hap why this happens is because you drew over that line a couple more times than you needed to because you weren't confident. And so if you need like to do two or three like passes of your design so you can have one final pass that's like the perfect, like this is only one line, I'm not gonna draw like three or four lines, I'm not gonna build up to it, uh, your artwork's gonna feel a lot more prof professional. Mm. Uh, another thing, can we zoom out? Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I think is interesting is the proportions are a little off. Like, it, it also looks like she's like teetering, I keep getting like mixed up. It looks like she's kind of like tilting a little bit. Yeah. Like if I just like poked her, uh -huh. she'd fall over. Uh -huh. And so if you just rotate her, like, well, I guess let me, it's reverse. If you rotate her in this direction, just a little bit, it would be better. Uh, her torso's really short compared to her legs, mm -hmm. right? And I know her arms are gonna be really long. Like if she had her arms straight down, she would be touching her kneecaps. And it, do, do, do yourself an experience, experiment, like stand up and just put your arms like to your side and see if you can touch your kneecaps and you realize you cannot. <laughs> uh, unless you have super long arms. Like I can almost touch my kneecaps because I have like really long arms, um, but I, I can't still. And so, uh, so the proportions is ultimately one of the big flaws with this one. And if you're going more stylized, then my advice for stylized is that you go all in or you go uh, the other way. Like if you wanna be more realistic with your drawing, then you need to make it feel more realistic. If you wanna go more stylized, then it's gotta be very clear 
that you're really pushing the proportions, you're really pushing the style. It doesn't have to always be like Disney style. There's other styles out there. I'm sure, you, again, I'm sure you know of artists that have ranging styles that you really admire. Then you got to look at that kind of stuff. In fact, you know, maybe I can find a, a piece of reference while just a real quick. Yeah. While you're scouring through the internets. Oh, we have some more. Yeah, let me show you. Once I have this, we can maybe switch back to my screen. Yeah. Once I have something that's very obvious. Okay, I'm going to grab a couple images when it's like a little bit drawn. This one is really cool as well, this double exposure selfie. Again, I think the values for this one could be, there could be more contrast because it is a lot darker here at the bottom and then this area, it's kind of blending into the background a lot. So if you made this a little bit lighter, I think it would stand out much more. Like it's very easy for me to see the nature text here. Uh, however, it's getting a little bit muddled with this on top of it. I think it makes for a cool effect, but if you want this to be the main focus, I think the contrast should be increased here as well. But I like the concept, the birds and the branches yeah. and the trees. This one's really good, man. I like that one a lot for sure. Um, okay, cool. So, so this is a, a great artist named uh, Carolyn Lim, and when you look at her style, it's very clear, like the confidence, right? So there's a lot of sketchiness to this, but like, she's not playing around with like what she is drawing. Mm -hmm. She's like, this is how I draw, yeah. and this is what I draw, you know. Uh, and then you have artists like this who draw like cool. again, they have no. There's no confusion. It feels so confident and strong, all the lines. Yes. I can see what you mean now. Yeah, there's no confusion what their intentions were, you know? And you look at like paintings, same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this obviously has a lot more uh, like volume, right, than those other like line arts, but it's clear. Like this is not how normal folds are on a, on a coat. But this artist says, I don't care. Yeah. This is my interpretation. And it's very clear and it's very well designed. Like the shapes are dynamic and they contrast with one another, but they all are unified because they're all triangles, you know? Like this triangle right here is a little bit bigger than the one right next to it. And they're going opposite directions, you know what I mean? And they all kind of have different vanishing points. So there's like this kind of oh. uh, flow of dynamicism going through it. But then if you really like follow the lines too, like. If you follow, like, let's say, like this hairline to the bridge of the nose, you'll see that those are like aligned. So there's some perspective in the artistry of this, rather than just like, oh, you know, I just better draw. Like this head has a, like this dog's head has some uh, perspective to it too, you know. And then there's just people that just draw really well, you know what I mean? Like these are just really good drawings, mm -hmm. right? And this is really well drawn. And so you just got to decide where you want to be, and then just start full speed ahead in that direction. You know what I mean? So hopefully that helps you out. And I would actually say that it's true for all the people who are doing like the graphic design stuff. In fact, I have some stuff that I can find on my, my Pinterest too. Uh, maybe I can find something later, but um, if you go to my art station, I have like a folder called collections uh, and you can just look at all the artwork like I was talking about earlier mm -hmm. <laughs> that I am inspired by and there's just too many. Wow. And uh, oh this is one specific folder but like uh, if you go to um, just the likes in general literally thousands of just amazing artists that will make you r remind you <laughs> that you're just a simple mortal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, and really humbles you. Wow. And reminds you that you should keep that Keep that, up the practice. Keep up that practice. Because other there. people are, you know? And again, you can be amongst them. It doesn't mean that you, like, I'll, I'll probably never, ever draw anything at this level like this artist did here, you know? Wow. But I don't need to. I can draw things in the level that I'm drawing them, mm -hmm. and there's an audience for that specifically. You know what I mean? But I, I, won't, uh, I won't be discouraged by this. I'll be encouraged. You know, I'll be like, oh my gosh, I can go further, you know? I can push myself a little bit harder. And this definitely is more along the artwork that I would be looking at for myself. You know, this might not resonate with you, but I think even the artwork that I don't do, uh, like in terms of genre, like I don't necessarily draw more like stylistic stuff like this, mm -hmm. but I can still admire yeah. like the proportions, the like the perspective, 
the anatomy, the design elements, the, the personality, and maybe get some clue of what I can do in my work, you know, a little differently. Dave is saying, Fibo Demons is Fibo Demons is yes. my friend. Tell Anthony you saved one design from him. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know this person. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he worked on uh, Love, Death, and Robots too, I believe, and it was it was some pretty amazing artworks. I think we have a couple minutes left, so we have some time to look at some more submissions that you guys have on Discord here. So let's take a look at this one. Cool. So I see that face, the leaves, the tree. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think the same thing is going on, right? It's just like um, like um, more of the contrast is like all over the place. Like if we're looking at like the branches and the body and stuff like that, like it, it feels like there's some, supposed to be some intention with why it's like that, but I don't not sure, right? Like. Like if I if I had this idea that like the from the face like the there's like a blossoming of a tree like thematically, I think that could have been a better direction, but right now it just feels more like you put the texture of a tree mm -hmm. on top of it, and then you're like oh I want to put something for the hair and then you did something for the hair, you know, and then I I, I like that you recognize that it should still be important to see the face, so you put like a value in like a color that resembles like some sort of face, um, but I think. Like, you know what would have been cool? Like, whatever you did for the face, like, I'm not sure what that texture is, like, looks like leaves or flowers, whatever. Um, if that was, like, the whole face, right? Not on the mouth and on the side of the face right now. It looks like a series of flowers, and then from the flowers, you you turn the branches into maybe her outfit. Have you ever seen those, like, yeah. outfits that have a lot of, like, That's floral designs? Mm -hmm. So it's not like she's actually wearing a floral design dress or something, but her her the silhouette would have been that, you know? And so it would've been clear, like right now, it feels like you had intention and because that is true, the intention that you put in there doesn't read well enough. Like I think you should've done, again, all or nothing. Be like, you know what? Like the head is gonna be all flowers and then like the body is gonna be like the branches of a tree so it's gonna look like some embroidered dress. Mm. The hair is gonna be like, you know, more flowers but like from like a, uh, a some other tree. I don't know, I'm not a tree <laughs> Expert. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then uh, make it fall like fall out of focus, or make it start to disappear as it escapes the side of the image, you know. But the colors are on point. Like blue and orange, or those types of tones usually go really well together. I think all Michael Bay movies are blue and orange. Oh, <laughs> all cool. the movies, all the movies are blue and orange because it's just a good uh, combination of colors. Mm. But I, I, I like the image actually. I think this this is pretty successful in a lot of different ways. Just again, that contrast and unity, guys. You gotta, no matter what you do, whether it's graphic design, concept art, illustration, type, uh, contrast and unity is what allows people to recognize things immediately mm -hmm. and also remember things immediately. The more iconic the image is and the more the spacing of like the, the design elements are better organized, the more easier it is to remember everything. So, yeah, that's all that's I gotta say great. about that. Let's see if we have one last one. Oh, okay. After Anthony gave some feedback. Oh. There we go. That they was quick. On, they went back Thanks, on top Cecilia. of it. Thanks, Cecilia. Yeah, this stands out way more. I yeah. do still think that there could be some improvement here in this area, right? Yeah, make make that fall fall apart. Watch. Let me uh, let me just do a quick demonstration. I'll, um, we got a minute left, so okay. it's got to be quick. All right, real quick. So like imagine, um, so you have like the, the side of the face like you did, right? And then you have like the hair flowing like you were wanting, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the neck, whatever, All right? Uh, what I'm trying to say is like you should have it like as it's like flowing out, it should be separated, you know? It should be starting to um, disappear into the, the ether, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, it starts to really get into the face too. And it's like, maybe then you can start seeing branches of a tree coming out of that. That could be really cool. Obviously I only have a minute, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to make this demonstration very meaningful to this person. <laughs> um, you know, so that way 
Because right now you have it like equally spaced, and then you just have like this large white spot there. It doesn't feel bring um, it together. Yeah. It doesn't feel like like that's the intention that you were like you were building momentum in one direction, and then you kind of like destroyed the momentum with like uh, this large blotched space and shape. You know, yeah. where like no, the momentum is like this deterioration. Oh. So <laughs> maybe we out. can check it out tomorrow <laughs> if you post your work again. We have That's another right. live stream. Idea. We're going to talk more about character design, go into some deeper topics, use some texture. Um, but we'll be live tomorrow morning at 930 yeah. at Pacific time. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining. See ya. I see you guys.